guys. I hope you're all doing well. I'm going to dive into the energies around Elon Musk and Twitter. We're just going to learn some stuff, okay? So I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to chill out. I'm going to throw it out to the universe. Hey, what can we understand? What can we learn? What what would the universe like to express to us, show us about Elon Musk and Twitter? Let's just see what comes up. All right, here we go. Oh, man, this is horrible. This is absolutely horrible. So this is the first scene. The scene is, it's like Freddy Krueger, your worst nightmare. Um, it is coming. Um, what about Friday the 13th? I mean, <laughs> so it's it's like a these sharp claws. And this has nothing to do with Wolverine. It's very energetically specific to Freddy Krueger. And those those like fingernail claw things are coming down and scratching my face really, really intensely. Like cutting into my flesh, cutting into my face. Nightmare on Elm Street happening. And I see that my head is rolling off of my neck and it's rolling onto the ground. And it, it's odd because the, the head that's rolling is kind of rolling in a spiral and usually spirals represent time. So it's rolling and that's what I'm being shown. I don't know what any of this means just yet, but let's see what happens next. Okay. Okay, because we're going to have to think clearly. We can't lose our head here. We have to think clearly. And then we're going to have to be strong to face our worst nightmare. What are you going to do to outsmart the Freddy Krueger experience? Because they do outsmart Freddy Krueger, right? So there is a way to outsmart this. I feel like the message is for Elon Musk. Like, don't lose your head. And... You got to keep your wits about you and that there is a solution to this. Can't get Freddy Krueger out of my sight. I feel like Freddy Krueger represents the attack on Twitter. And let's remember that Twitter, the goal, I mean, it, this is an announcement about freedom of speech. And we need to work on this. We, we have to work on this. It is so important that we work on this, okay? And so this is this is the, the greatest nightmare is, is an attack on freedom of speech. And what are we going to do about the Freddy Krueger attacking freedom of speech or attacking Twitter or Elon Musk's goals? You know, this is still a brand new purchase, a brand new process, a brand new beginning. And so let's give this time, right, to come full circle. But... This Freddy Krueger is not easy to deal with. What's interesting is I'm being shown that we need to create a mirror so that Freddy Krueger can see himself in the mirror. And that he can see himself completely, clearly, for who and what he is. A monster. And why would showing a monster that they are a monster do anything to help the situation? Like, what is it going to do for Freddy, Freddy Krueger to see himself clearly in the mirror? It's his choice if he wants to look into himself or not. It's his choice how he wants to judge himself. But something odd takes place because when I see Elon Musk creates a mirror and the mirror is showing the, the face of the monster is now enamored with its own appearance, like the narcissist is enamored with its appearance. It's like the story of Narcissus, I think is the, the name literally comes from this. I'm looking into the reflection in, in the pond or in, in the river, like looking into one's appearance and not being able to look away, is obsessed with oneself. And this is a very gross looking face to be obsessed with but it's like he is in love with himself he is in love with himself but to the rest of us that see the monster for what it is we look at each other and say uh 
is that really what's happening here? Like, Freddy Krueger is in love with himself? Like, ew. Like, you're gross. You're very gross. But I'm glad you found something to entertain yourself and it's yourself. Wow. <laughs> and so that's what's happening. And I am to tell Elon Musk to stay strong in his stance and keep, it's almost like um, pointing the compass straight ahead. And um, you're going to come up with solutions. You're going to come up with the solution. You will. And somehow when the narcissist becomes obsessed with itself, when Freddy Krueger, which is a monster, becomes obsessed with himself, it, everything quiets down. It's like he has something else to do with his time than terrorize you because it, now he can have himself in his own time. It's really surprising. I didn't expect that. Okay, what else about Elon Musk and Twitter? What else? Okay, I'm being shown the next thing. I'm looking down from above, and I see a really big sheet of paper. And I can't see it clearly. It's so far away. I can't read it. I mean, it's, it's odd because the sheet of paper is as big as a state. I mean, it's, it's, it's so huge. It's like the size of a state. But I'm so high up that I still can't see the writing on the paper. It's very far away. It's very blurry. And I feel like if I could just get closer and closer, I could see it. But even at now, I'm so close. I'm actually falling right through the paper. And I'm going into a pretty dark space. It's just swallowing me up. This paper is holy. Like, this paper is is precious. It's sacred. It's important. <laughs> it's it. This is literally what's coming up. Imagine that the Bible. What, what if somewhere in time that the Bible could not ever be written? It could never be expressed. It could never be um, handed out. Um, that it would be a message that would never have come out of the, the body, of the inside of, of human beings from our history. There, what, what would have come from that? Like, this is a very interesting thought. The written word is so important. It's as important as the Bible. And we know that you could say, is the Bible the original text? Well, it's an important piece of written word, isn't it? It's molded and shaped the human race for a lot of generations. The written word is important in how it shapes us. And so the scene has a complexity about it because I'm falling from the sky. I can't see. I can't read. I'm having a hard time translating the written word. And now I'm falling through the written word. And I'm falling into a dark place. And the page is ripped. And I never got to read it. I never got to understand it. I just fell in, got swallowed up in this like dark underground place. I see Freddy Krueger is still obsessed with his own reflection. I'm in a dark place. And I can't get out of it. And how do I mend this? How do I fix this? How do I correct this? How do I... What do I do? And, and for some reason, it, it feels like it's okay to just be down here for a little while. Like, we don't have to have all the problems solved today because time is part of the solution, too. And we can't forget that. That time is part of the solution. And in time, there's going to be moments where we're falling from the sky. Bam, like, we didn't get things the way we wanted them. We're now through the written word and we're in a dark place. Like, how come it's all working out like this? But it's okay to be exactly where you are in the moment. And it's okay to be working with the exact problems or challenges that you have to juggle in the moment. And that everything is essentially perfect in the moment that it is in. And what's interesting is it's almost like we want to expose the monsters. We want um, to find resolution. But as it's okay, here, here's the thought. What if we solved all the problems in the whole wide world? What's interesting is the human being now lacks something important to them, which is a problem. And the human being must learn how to adapt with a world that doesn't have problems in it anymore. 
And so what we need to work on is adapting or creating, manifesting a world that doesn't have problems or even the desire to exist in a world with problems. And a lot of our subconscious, a lot of our upbringing, a lot of our um, translation of day-to-day -day life, it's, it's got problems in it. Problems that must be solved in order to then get to the next problem that must be solved. And we just keep piling in with the problems, just piling. But what I do is I just take Freddy Krueger in the mirror and I send it off to where uh, somewhere else, basically. I just send it off to a star of light. I just send it off. It's just a really loud sound that doesn't need to be there. It's just a distraction, really. It's just a gross, ugly distraction. Is it really a nightmare on Elm, Elm Street or just a gross, ugly distraction that's obsessed with itself? So we just send it away to a star and let it do its thing there and let it be guided by its own higher self and all that stuff, right? By its own angels and all that stuff. Because even Freddy Krueger has spirit guides that love Freddy Krueger unconditionally. We forget about that. But yeah, Freddy Krueger is going to have a lot of personal demons too, right? So does everybody. And so we send that off. And I feel like I'm meant to do this to help kind of clear the mind of Elon Musk to remind him that his path is perfect and that he's doing everything right. And there's a lot of people that are really grateful for his appreciation of the written word. It's as important as the Bible. And people could say that the Bible is not that important. And a Bible is important. Look at how it shaped and molded the human race. That's how important it is. It's a key component of our history. <laughs> but if we start to identify what what's worth having access to, what's not worth having access to, like what, what we should know, what we should not know, we might as well just take the Bible and toss it in the fire, fire and forget about it. And we'll write something new. But if, if every human being matters, and their voice matters, and their voice can mold and shape the, the evolution of humanity, the written word is really precious. It's precious enough to protect. It's as precious as protecting the Bible. It's precious as, enough as protecting our understanding or translation of human history, is understanding each other, is understanding our evolution, is understanding what has mattered to us over generations of time. And we are living in history right now. So everything is essentially perfect and in divine time. And that is what I meant to share. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Everything feels so much more grounded, so much more put together, so much more clear minded, so much more okay and solid, and just being okay with kind of the way the world turns, kind of going back to the spiral, okay with the, the way things are in time. We are living in history right now. It's pretty exciting, actually. So I hope you guys found this valuable. And if any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, you can do so by visiting my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Have a great day, everybody.